Welcome to the video that will explain a little bit about robot skills that you will be able to participate in if you choose to do so at a VEX IQ tournament, and a little bit about how to use VEX code IQ to create your autonomous program so your robot will run without a joystick. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure you have looked closely at the game manual and read all the rules related to robot skills as well as the starting positions for your robot. Now, often in robot skills, you are allowed to choose any of the starting positions. So as you can see here, they're highlighted in yellow and there are eight different starting positions you can choose from. So you may choose to run a different program from a different starting position. You also need to be aware of where you are able to stand, where the driver stations are. So with robot skills, you're able to choose which side of the field you're going to drive on and where you're going to start your robot. You're also allowed to bring your robot back to a starting position at any time during the one minute robot skills match. So you can stop your program and pick up your robot and bring it back to a starting position. Um, but there are will probably be some rules with that, like any game elements that are touching your robot will probably be need to be removed from the field. So just make sure you read the game manual. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. So let's talk a little bit about how to use VEX code IQ to code a program to run your robot autonomously. That means without a joystick. Now you may choose to create three different programs and you can name them autonomous one, autonomous two, and autonomous three, and you can run them at different times during robot skills. So let's jump into VEX code IQ. So as you can see, each program will be saved in a different slot. Right now, I have my joystick program saved in slot one. So I definitely want to make sure I don't save anything else in slot one because it will rewrite over my joystick program. Now in my joystick program, you'll see in my device menu that I have a controller that's already configured. I have um, my joysticks and I have an arm and a claw that's all configured on my joystick. And I actually am not going to use a joystick on my next program. You will also see that I have um, all my motor groups together um, for the arm and my claw is in port 11. So I have all my motor set up, my drivetrain set up, um, and this would be my controller program. So I want in a forever loop, I want my arm velocity to slow down a little bit. I want it at 50% power. And I want my claw velocity to go um, at 75%. And another thing you might want for your joystick is when you stop holding the button down, it holds rather than um, stops all the way. So if it stops all the way, it can open back up or go back down. So holding will give it a little bit of power so it will hold it up or hold it open. So this is my joystick program. And again, I have it in slot one and I don't want to put another program in slot one. I want to save this for um, slot one. Now, normally I would open up a new program and I would go file and open up a new blocks project, or I can save as and make sure I have this saved as joystick. And I can edit this program and turn this one into, I'm going to make this my autonomous or Auton one program. Okay. And on this one, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of my controller. If you're creating a new program, just set up all the motors and devices the same, just get rid of this controller. So I'm going to get rid of my controller because it will default to your controller if you have it in there. So I got to get rid of my controller because this is an autonomous program with no drivers. So that all of my motors and sensors are set up identically to my joystick program. And I'm going to go ahead and close out that window and I can go ahead and get rid of this because well, actually, I might want to keep this because I want the same thing that's happening with my joystick. I want all of these motors to be set at a certain velocity and I want them to hold when they stop. So I'm going to keep that in there. OK, so notice over on the side, we've got our motion menu so I can make individual motors start and spin and I can set them as I've been talking about and I can change this between my claw and my arm 
and I also have a drivetrain menu. And so this would be the bottom of my chassis with my wheels, and this is probably where you're gonna start. So I have all of my uh, velocity set for my arm and claw motors, and now I'm ready to get the robot to start moving. So I'm gonna drive forward, and I can do this a couple ways. I can drive forward and I can wait. Um, let's see if I go down a little bit and I find a wait. I can wait for a certain amount of seconds. That's one way to, you can time it and say, I'm gonna go forward for three seconds. And then I can turn right for a certain number of seconds. Or another way to do that, let me get rid of these two, is you can do it by, I'm gonna get rid of this one as well, I can do it by the distance. So I can drive forward for a certain number of millimeters. So the one thing about autonomous is that you're gonna to have to put a couple lines of code in, download it to the brain, test it out on the field, and see if it's doing what you want. Um, you generally just put in a couple lines of code and then test. And then you either fix them or add a couple more lines of code and test. So it's really a code test, code test pattern that you will use. It's very hard to just sit down and write a whole autonomous program because you don't know if it's gonna respond correctly to the first couple commands. So generally, um, you can write out a plan. I wanna go forward, turn right, I wanna lift up my arm. You can write out what's called pseudocode, which is English with a little bit of code language. And you can write out a plan but you definitely are not gonna be able to just write all, out all the code. So here I'm gonna go drive forward for 200 millimeters, and then you there is already um, a measurement in your motors that can measure the degrees. Depending, it may or may not be accurate, you're gonna to have to test it, but I'm gonna turn right for 90 degrees instead of a number of seconds. Um, and then I'm going to lift my arm. So I'm gonna spin my arm up. Um, I can do this for, again, a certain, oops, let's get that on there, a certain number of seconds. Or I can do it by, um, let's see what else do they have there, uh, by a number of millimeters, oops, sorry, um, by degrees. Um, but I'm also, I could do seconds. And sometimes I find the seconds to be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna um, spin the arm up for uh, two seconds. And then I'm gonna open my claw, go back to my motion menu, and I'm gonna spin um, my claw, and it's gonna open, and I wanna do that for, let's say, one second. And then I wanna make sure that, um, you can see if it holds already from our forever loop up there, um, but you might be able to put that hold in right here. So if I do the set stopping to hold, so that means it's gonna keep it open. I'm gonna get my claw set um, stopping to hold. So if it see if it works up here, and if it doesn't, you can always add it into your lines of code. So basically this is it. You're trying to score points. You're dragging over your code. You're gonna drive forward, turn right, drive forward, turn left, raise your arm, open your claw, try and score points, just like you would with a driver, but all written in code. And that's basically it. So this is probably where I will save my Auton 1, but remember, I'm gonna save it into slot two. And now I know that this is going to be for a certain starting position that I've recorded in my engineering notebook. My Auton 1 program is I'd probably draw a map in my notebook of what that starting position is. And then I would make another program for another starting position or another series of commands. And I would call it Auton 2 and I would save it into the third slot. And then I would do another program and I would call it Auton 3 and I would save it into the fourth slot. So then when you run the programs on your brain, you will go in and you'll see, it'll say joystick, Auton 1, Auton 2, and Auton 3. All right, I hope this helps. It's at least get you started, but remember it's trial and error. So if it doesn't work, try it a different way. That's how programmers do this. We are, we write the code, we test it, and we troubleshoot. So good luck with your autonomous programming.